Well, I, I think this is going to be decided in decades and not in presidential terms. Uh, but what you've heard last week from Secretary Pompeo's speech at the Nixon Library, and that was that followed a speech by uh, Attorney General William Barr, FBI uh, leader Chris Wray, the National Security Advisor O'Brien. So this was a fuselage of speakers, American speakers, really laying down things as a new Cold War with China. But what's wrong about calling it a new Cold War, Kelly, is it looks backwards, and, and this is totally new. Hmm. The U.S. has never had a peer competitor this capable before across all the realms of competition, technology, economy, political, military. And the Chinese have never had this degree of world power before, so they're going to be making decisions they've never made before. They've gone from 2% of global GDP in 1980 to 20% last year. No country in history, certainly not in modern history, has ever grown that quickly, and they're they're growing accustomed with power and how to exercise it. And we're going to have to manage the world together, and we just haven't figured out how to do that yet. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting that you say this isn't so much a battle for world domination as it is for world determination, although you actually still mean world domination, but you're seeing a different kind of way. It's determining the very shape of the world order. It's determining whether, as you say, it's going to be democratic or autocratic. It's determining whether there's going to be free speech or not. And we've already seen the way those doing business with China play by their rules, not ours. Yeah, the, uh, the world domination term has been used hyperbolically for many years, but no country in history has ever really uh, achieved it. You can have be a determiner of world events, and I'd say the United States with its allies has been that for most of the last 75 years, setting up the rules, uh, the international order, everything from the uh, European Union, the NATO, the Bretton Woods organizations. The real question is who's going to create the standards and rules for everything from technology to rule and law going forward? Who's going to have the key positions at the international agencies? Most people don't actually know that the International Monetary Fund, in the bylaws, it says the world's largest economy will be the setting for the headquarters for the International Monetary Fund. That used to be a joke, but at some point, China is going to say, well, why is this sitting in Washington, D.C.? Shouldn't it be in China? These are the issues that are going to come up, and that's what I mean uh, by world determination. Yeah. Is you're not going to dominate the world, but you can determine a lot of outcomes, and they could be determined more and more by China in the future. So, Fred, that said, whether it's Trump or Biden in the White House for the next four years, does the U.S. need to purposefully decouple from China? Uh, you know, what is the best course of action, especially when so much of our commerce is intertwined? These are the world's two largest economies. And if you just look at Germany, one our closest ally, our biggest ally in Europe, its biggest trading partner is China. If you ask Germany to decouple from China, they're just they're going to say nothing doing. If you ask our uh, Middle East uh, allies, who now have China as the biggest recipient of their oil deliveries, they're also going to say nothing doing. And so it seems to me that this decoupling talk will boil down over time to sensitive technologies and other issues. China will selectively choose non-American suppliers for a great many things, so there'll be a voluntarily de de decoupling from their side, it is already taking place. Yeah. And that's why it's a totally new world, is China grew up in the system, economic system that we with our allies created.